Would you like to know the difference between the best enterprise architects and the best cloud architects versus the rest? The architects that get promoted and earn the most? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with a little over 25 years experience, about 23 year years above principal architect level in my career. And I can tell you, after being an architect for 25 years, after training architects for a very long period of time, and after working with architects and coaching architects, I can tell you there's about 15 things different that the best architects do versus the rest of the architects that are out there. And those 15 things different are the key to success in the person's cloud architect career or enterprise architect career, but also the difference in your client success or lack thereof. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. The 15 things you wanna to do to get that cloud architect promotion or enterprise architecture promotion. And the first thing really is about your ability to impact your clients. So how do you truly measure an architect's work? Like a cloud architect, enterprise architect, solutions architect. How do you measure our work? Well, it's not by our pretty pictures. It's not by whether we spent a lot of money on the tech and it works, but we got nothing out of it. It's the impact we made in our clients. So did our architecture make the client's organization better? For, and I'll give you an example. Let's say a hospital were to come to me as an enterprise architect and say they, they want to use AI to help prevent medical errors. So medical error prevention is the goal. So if we create this AI architecture and it reduces medical errors, it is a success. Now, if we have the coolest AI architecture, but there's no reduction in medical errors, that's called an architecture failure and no impact was made to the client. Clients spent and wasted a whole lot of money, but they've got nothing for it. And instead of uh, the AI recommendation system, maybe they could have chosen another medical technology or another approach to prevent medical errors. So what separates the best architect from the rest is the ability to define impact. So let's talk about what these 15 things are. The truly best enterprise architects and cloud architects are focused on the outcome, the business outcome that they're trying to achieve and everything they design is based upon that outcome. So a great business, a great enterprise architect or any architect for that matter, will deliver measurable business results, a competitive advantage. And that average architect gets the tech to work and the tech works very well but there's no competitive advantage, no enhanced outcome. So a great architect blends business and technology together and marries them together for strategy. So a great architect is working and co-creating the business architecture. We're working on new business processes. We're working on a technology strategy to give us a competitive advantage. Where the average architect are proposing a technology that seems cool. And it's cool technology, but it doesn't change market position. From a strategy per side, a great architect aligns the business needs with whatever architectures we actually create. And that's what the focus is, where the average architect designs working systems. Now, when it's 80% of architecture is typically failing to provide any business value, when I say the average architect, I'm talking about the average architect. And that's the difference between those that make it to the top and the rest. So let's talk about executive influence. A great architect will be able to influence the C-suite and the board to do what's necessary to protect their organization or grow their organization. An average architect fumbles with the C-suite, they start talking about jargon, and they can't influence the C-suite to do whatever is necessary to be successful. A great architect has very persuasive communication. They can, we can give a presentation that's going to move a company or an industry forward. For example, I've done many presentations to get an organization to think towards this type of technology as a competitive advantage. So lots of presentations, you have to be able to deliver them. The average architect can give a presentation, but giving a presentation and moving an audience are two very different things. 
Now, a great architect really works hard to create cultural change along with the architecture. And why is that so critical? Architectures that include work on cultural change are seven times more likely to be successful according to Prosky's data. So we really have to look at that. So the great architect is there. And they're really in there looking at the organization's culture, looking at the operating models, and looking whatever change is necessary to make the new architecture succeed. Where the average architect can make the tech work, but not the organization. So the way decision rights and governance. A really great architect will define guardrails, decision rights, and things that actually speed delivery. Because... Our goal is to create those guardrails so people have the ability to do things faster inside of the rules. Now, an average architect relies on slow gatekeeping methods, and when all of a sudden something comes up in a meeting, they add some meeting theater. Oh, yeah, let's talk about this. No, it's a very different thing. So then making sure the entire thing is streamlined, move it along quicker. Now, financial value. A truly great architect is going to tie the design to uh, the return on investment. We're gonna be looking at total cost of ownership. We're gonna be looking at unit economics where we know where every dollar is going to every part of the business. We're gonna be looking at revenue. We're gonna be looking at risk and impact of various risks to our organization. And an average architect will be citing features. So there's some differences between the best and the rest. Now, a truly great architect is looking at it from a customer and even a product lens. So. A really great architecture architect is going to frame an architecture around the customer journey, for example, or around a service level agreement or a service level need for the organization. A great architect is focusing on time to value. The average architect centers around infrastructure metrics and component uptime, which are valid things from a technology perspective, but not at the executive level as much. Now, simplification, and I can see this all the time. A truly great architect designs simple and elegant solutions whenever possible and deletes complexity. Fewer platforms, clear, cleaner contracts, more standard policies. An average architect start accumulating very cool technologies and tools little by little, and the organization doesn't get a lot out of it. A great architect is constantly thinking about security, resilience, availability by design, and, there, we're, and we're baking security into everything we do. We're looking at compliance in everything we do. We're looking at evidence and making evidence-based decisions. We're looking at resilience patterns. We're looking at it all holistically. And I would say an average architect bolts on security later and thinks about availability later. Now, if we talk about operating model and fit, you know, a really great architect, especially an enterprise architect, is going to tailor the architecture to the business's needs and operating models, whether it be unification or coordination or replication or diversification, where an average architect doesn't even know what those operating models are, why we're actually focused on those operating models, and they apply a one-size-fits-all approach. Oh, everybody gets the same thing. Now, the ability to tell a story is really critical for architecture roles, and especially when we're dealing with risk, but any kind of to tell a story. So let's talk about risk and storytelling. A great architect translates risk into business terms. And realistically speaking, what that might be is we might be talking about the likelihood of something occurring, the impact if something can occur, how we can control and the efficiencies and type of controls. And we can tell a story that's going to get the people to realize that they need to manage risk and spend on the risk and invest in risk mitigation. Where an average architect is just not making those type of choices and they're not making those data-driven decisions because in many cases they don't really have the ability to explain the risk because they have the technical skills without the business acumen. Evidence-based decisions. A truly great architect is going to record and look at all the architecture decision records that we've seen. We're going to consider all trade-offs, all constraints, all uh, whatever's best for the organization's needs. You know, I can, I've seen so many average, ar average architects come in 
and not really look at the previous architectural decision records of what worked and when not, and then just makes a recommendation and, and doesn't document the what's, the how's, the why's, the trade-offs, the rationale. And that makes things harder and slower in the future. And lastly, and most importantly, and everything we're talking about here goes back to the first premise, measurable impact. You know, that's the key definer of a success. A great architect, you know, really delivers something that changes things. If the customer comes to us to trying to increase sales, then revenue is increased or sales are increased. If they come up with us and say, we need a reduction in cost to serve a client and we can reduce that cost to serve to clients, we did our job. If an organization is looking to be more agile so they can deploy new things faster get, and we deliver that, we did their job. If we added complexity and they're now slower, we uh, clearly did our job completely incorrectly. So that's how you can tell the difference between the best enterprise architects, the best cloud architects, and even the best solutions architects than the rest, the average solutions architect or the average cloud architect and what have you. If you would like to become an enterprise architect or a cloud architect or a security architect or an AI architect or any other architect for that matter, please join me on our twice weekly uh, free architecture webinars, which will be live and free on Zoom. So you can ask questions, we can have conversations. On these free architecture webinars, we'll go over what we do in each of the architecture roles. For example, what do we do as an enterprise architect? We'll talk about the skills needed for the role. For example, what are the skills you need to be an enterprise architect? We'll talk about the things you need to stand out as a top enterprise architect to help people to come to you, to want to interview you for enterprise architect roles or security architect roles or any other architect roles. We'll teach you what you need to do to be able to get your first enterprise architect job or security architect job. And these webinars are completely free. They're live on Zoom. So look in the description of this video and sign up. And I hope to meet and have a great conversation with you on the next free architecture webinar. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architect career. This is Mike Gibb signing off for now, and I hope to meet you personally in a live free architecture webinar. Take care and hope to see you soon.